Hey guys, DMike here, ready for another episode. This one is gonna take quite a bit because of this dungeon being a little bit on the long side. So we're gonna get started right away with our big blue rooster friend. Actually, he doesn't get to come inside with us, unfortunately. No animal buddies in this game. So he's gonna have to wait outside. So one of the big things that I need to stress in this dungeon is how valuable the boomerang is. It's one of those items that you can go without it. I mean, it's not like it's required. I mean, you can you don't even have to have it to beat the game. It's not something you have to do. But as you just saw, first things first, you kill that fairy anti- I don't know what it's called. You kill that creature with your, not the like-likes, the swirly skull thing. Killing that will actually net you a fairy, which is really cool, pretty useful. So this is part of the main gimmick of the dungeon that I will explain more as time goes on. We have a big black ball right now that you might be wondering, what am I going to do with that? So first things first, pull this switch out all the way. Skidoo over this direction. And get your ball clear of the gels. So... There are four pillars in the Eagle's Tower. They are what's currently keeping it intact, structurally sound, and we need to destroy them, just like I just did. That's not a, that's not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> that's a whoops. That was a bad jump. So there are four of them. They There's Kirby. Another Nintendo franchise making an appearance. As I go the wrong direction entirely, doing great. If we're not having a good time yet, we should be because we're doing awesome. Let's go ahead and hit that crystal switch. Yeah, this is definitely, I think this one is probably my favorite dungeon. It's another one like the dungeon in in, in the bay, you know, Catfish's Maw. That one has a gimmick too. Maybe I just like gimmicks. Maybe I'm just a gimmicky guy. I don't know. I think it's fun. This one can be pretty frustrating though if you are less skilled at this game than me, which probably isn't too many people because I'm not very good at it, but I remember this one giving me some fits. But doing the chess piece puzzle will give you the map. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. There are four floors as you can see here. Nice little indication of our current position with the blinking link head as well as where the ball is so that's pretty cool that's gonna be super useful i don't remember if that was a thing in the original it may have been it may not i don't know but being able to see that is a pretty good way to keep tabs on where you're at so bring the ball with you throw it over the gap crush that pillar that was actually really cool i wasn't intending to do that in one fell swoop but i did it for you guys for the fans. You're like, finally, some high quality, well-played gaming. That's how you know that I'm committed to everybody. So navigating this dungeon isn't terrible. It's definitely one that takes a little bit of getting used to and Kind of figuring out what you need to do isn't exactly super clear. There are the owl's beak, talon, whatever those are. I don't know. It's his face. It's a talon. Yeah, they're talons that are on their face. No, there's the owl's beak statues that you can refer to, which I think this might be where it is. Or this is the compass, one of the two. My memory's a little hazy, but okay, compass, cool. So those... Hints can help you out. The game kind of just tells you like, hey, knock down the pillars, dummy. And then that's what you what you do. Oh, well, where did the ball go? Oh, back to the... Uh, are we having a good time, everybody? I'm having a great time. Love it. This is why we do it. This is why we stay together for the kids. Okay, so. Let's go back and get the ball. It's nicely teleported back to its original resting place. That's convenient. It'd be really horrible if you had to like track it down over like multiple floors. That would probably really frustrate me and I would not, I would, you know, I'm being sarcastic 
sometimes when I'm like, oh, let's have a good time, whatever, but that would legitimately make me pretty frustrated. <laughs> so thankfully, that's not the case here. We're still doing okay. It's just a minor setback. That's how you know how authentic this is. There's no Photoshop going on with this Let's Play, everybody. This is the real deal. Thankfully, coming back, we don't have to deal with the... Yeah, see, it like clips off the side of this box and then comes down. That's not my fault. That's shenanigans. I don't like that. So we need to find a way to get down and around. I think we can do that now because we went the other way. Maybe we're looking for a staircase up, not this way. Those Kirby creatures are kind of scary. Let's let's get close and see what happens. You gonna do its thing? You gonna no? Just okay. Okay. He doesn't want to. He doesn't. Oh, there it goes. Can we go down this way? No. Okay. So we need to find a way down and around. I think actually the quickest way to where we want... <sighs> Excuse me. I think the quickest way down and around is to actually fall through this pit here. This should take us down to the... Yeah. The first level. There's some Gibdos here. So there's nothing we can do here. We actually need to... I think head left? Now, this is all me trying to remember this from childhood, so just bear with me. This just kind of gets to the point in the game where, like, having a little bit of... Like, if you were going to Let's Play this, obviously, I'm speaking on the behalf of myself because that's what I'm doing. But as a game, this is one that, in general, you... This is kind of where you start to... I mean, unless you're... You know, gonna go beast mode and be pro at it, which I'm not. This is kind of where the game starts to need you to really put your thinking hat on. Not in this specific room, this is just a tile puzzle, but taking all those out opens that door. You don't get any prize for it, but you do get access to the fourth pillar, or the third pillar. Good math. And I wonder what this bombable wall has in store for us. Let's go ahead and make it go kaboom all right so moving down we're getting a little bit closer to the fourth one which is right there this all kind of happens really fast like if you know what you're doing in this instance then you can kind of figure stuff out pretty quickly but as you can see there's no real way to take the the ball and do anything with it so we have to go around that's kind of one of the i guess minor annoyances of this dungeon i mean that's what it's meant for is that you have to go down and around. You gotta bring it around town. So not too bad. You're gonna wanna throw it down here. The room that we need it in is actually to the left, so that's not too bad. And I think if we fought on here, this should be okay. Yeah. I'm actually not being intentionally obtuse, but the chest that you just saw in that other room is actually the dungeon item. That takes five sword smacks? Get those. Never skipping leg day. All right. I don't know if that would technically make sense. Like, does, do they skip leg day? Because, I mean, they're mummies. Are they like zombies? Like, I feel like zombies... Anyway, so first, dungeon item. Mirror shield. Probably one of the most anticlimactic items in this game, at least. Because I missed that crystal switch entirely. We don't have a key to do anything with that yet, so we'll come back, but... Yeah, zombies? Like, the whole thing with... This is something I thought about. I have a lot of... Ass I have an assortment of thoughts that may or may not make sense to the average person. That's fine. But one of the things that I was always curious about is how zombies would logically exist in, like, a current human framework. Because, oh, I'm gonna be stuck here, aren't I? We love that. Anyway, so zombies. High quality commentary. This is what you guys came here for. So zombies are like reanimated humans, right? That's kind of the lore of zombies. So it's a dead person. Maybe somebody that died of natural causes or whatever being killed in some way. 
that leaves the brain intact, I guess. So in what possible scenario would zombies be like a real threat? Because, you know, they've got arms and legs. Like they don't, they're not, I mean, they might be disembodied in certain ways, but don't, uh, wouldn't zombies like have a difficulty with like being able to be mobile? Because like, I feel like most people wear pants. So unless you die when you're naked. So disregard if you're naked when you die. Excuse you. This is the red Hinox, by the way. Oh my goodness. That's super uncool. That's a wizard robe. All right, so we got to make a little trek back. But anyways, I was saying I got distracted by talking about zombies and pants. So unless you die with your pants down, or sorry, unless you die when you're naked, if you die with your pants down or something like that, you know, you're going to lose weight over time as a zombie. Like, you don't have the ability to have, like, a properly nourished... I don't know. Physique? You're not as corporeal as you were prior. So, like, in that case, wouldn't you... Uh, come on. There we go. Wouldn't... Like, your pants would fall down, right? Unless you're wearing, like, a solid belt. Like, we're talking, like solid, high quality, you know, made leather here. Unless that's the case, like your pants fall down. You're not gonna be able to walk around, right? Cause you're gonna be stuck. Like you're gonna be waddling everywhere. It's like, you know, you got a bad case of the, the number twos and you're trying to get to the bathroom fast enough in time. Like nobody wants to have to do that. That's frustrating. Also, if that was TMI, I apologize everybody. That's just the, just the way I think. Can't help it. This is just the way I was raised. So, this is not going the way that I wanted to. I was actually doing really well up until the Hinox fight. That kind of threw a wrench into the old plans because now I have to figure out how to get back to him. I know how to get back to him. I'm just being a, a goober about it. Yeah. That's just one of the things that's kind of tricky about this one. There's a lot of crystal switches and stuff to get around. But an aesthetic thought that I just had is how much I really like the... I haven't stopped talking so you can hear it, but how much I really like the crackling of the fire from the torches that are in this dungeon. That's super cool. All right, buddy, we're back. Round two. Here we go. Not this time. Nope, nope, nope. You can take him out pretty easily with your boomerang. So let's just cheese this one. Yeah, how's that feel? No throwing us in holes again. That's right. A lot easier this time around now that we've got an improved arsenal. Not as much of a hassle. Okay, so... We have the ability to get across that gap now because we took out the... I don't know what those are called. The... Playing card trio? I don't know. I have no idea what they're called. Shocking. But because we have that chest there, we can skirt across the gap using the hookshot. Get a very stupendous prize. But the real prize here is taking out the final pillar. That actually completes the gimmick of the dungeon. And you can see here it actually does have a a literal effect. So we just killed a bunch of stuff. Like, obviously, whatever was down in that certain area where we were, we just crushed it. So Link may or may not just be a, uh, a mass murderer from his axe. All right. So there are, some ch there are some changes that have been done to the dungeon that prior to that, you can't... You can't make any sort of progress until you do this. So what I mean is that the tower collapsed on itself and we're looking to get back to... We're trying to ascend, obviously. That's what you do with towers, duh. So that's the way she goes. You can hop down here. 
and not do anything because I forgot to hit the switch. Awesome. But the boomerang saves us, as it always does. Boomerang's a great item. Crazy that's not required. It's an optional item. I mean, like, you don't have to complete the trade quest or anything. But I like it. It usually stays on my my attack button most of the time. That's uh, aside from the sword, because it's stronger than the sword. All right, so here's another mini boss. This is the uh, flautist. I don't know what his name is, but he has these. He can summon his bat friends, which we just murdered. Yeah, but man, we're really uh, really batting a thousand here with killing all this wildlife. So use your boomerang, clear this room out. It's super nice just to be able to have the the reinforcements of these fairies. Like, you don't need it, but it really makes things easier. I mean, you see how many of those are in a dungeon? There's a ton. Like, I think I've collected five or six fairies already. So, for somebody who's pretty reckless like me when it comes to playing this game, that will really help. So we get the nightmare key. We're just moving along. Like, this dungeon, when you know how the gimmick works and what you're doing, it makes things a ton easier. There are Goombas present. I mean, there's there's already like where the final boss is. So there it is. That's pretty cool, right? Now, we do need to... Nope, not today. Seems like there's a, a bit of work left to do. I'm just trying to remember what I'm supposed to do at this point. Memory gets a bit hazy. And I say that, I mean, like when I did the original Let's Play of this, I burned through this one. But a big reason for that. <laughs> so that's what the mirror shield can do. It can take Beemos down. That's pretty neat. I burned through this one, but that was predominantly just because of... I practiced the bejesus out of this one. I really, I really went for it. But I wanted to do this one more legitimate. I mean, the last, the last time I played it, it wasn't illegitimate, but I feel like it's more fun to watch me kind of bumble around a little bit instead of, uh, you know, being too incredible. I mean, wouldn't want to make anyone feel bad with my amazing skills. Chess puzzle complete. I think that's two of them in this dungeon. It's probably two too many in my opinion. Get ourselves some more secret medicine. You can't actually take that more than once, so you get one at a time. Those are full restores. Ouch, excuse you. Let's kill this Beemos for fun. How's that feel? Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. I thought that would have despawned, but apparently it didn't. No, I feel like I'm missing a key that I need to, to keep going. Or maybe not. This might be all I need to do. Nope. We're already at the boss. That's pretty crazy. 18 minutes in or something like that. That's not too bad. There's actually additional stuff in this dungeon that I can do. Some collectibles, but we'll come back for those later. I just wanted to make sure that I took care of the main ins and outs. So I think this is the only time in this, in this game that you hear this boss music. And it's the only boss that you fight outside. So this is pretty amazing. That's why it's the best, I think. Kind of reminds me of Storm Eagle from... Mega Man X. Wonder how I drew that connection, right? Okay. So he's gonna fly around, but I have the I have the piece of power music still going. So you don't want to fly off the tower. Come on. So you can use your Pegasus boots to to keep yourself intact. You have to wait till he flies up at you. He'll keep circling the tower. Come on. There he goes. So that's the same guy with his bat friends from earlier. Corrupting wildlife and using that as a... As a, a weapon of force. No! Alright, so... Back up to the tower. <laughs> Eventually. Alright. We're doing great, everybody. We're doing great. So yeah, the Pegasus boots will help you 
keep your momentum, not fall off. There we go. All right, not too bad. Yeah, this isn't too bad. It's just a situation of paying attention to where you're going. This is just a very cool, unique boss fight. That's why I think I like it the best. It does a lot of damage, though. Every time that I get hit by that, that's half a heart. I feel like on hero mode, this might be multiple hearts of damage. I probably got to throw in the boomerang there. That's dumb. We're doing our best here. Yeah, if you just stay ahead of the feathers. I feel like I could probably hit him up with that, too. I'm being a little sloppy, but that's okay. Not too tough. You got to draw it out. It's for the tension. You know, you can't be anticlimactic when you're fighting a giant bird of prey. I'm actually not sure if you can do that or not. I mean, I guess if I pull it off in this fight, then you'll see it. And if I don't, then it'll be left up to the imagination. So I'm not throwing it fast enough at all. Oh, you can. Okay. There it is. So this is a, definitely a completionist let's play. So you definitely get to see everything. And we take him out with the boomerang. So that wasn't too bad. Actually, I think I finished this faster than the face shrine. I didn't do everything in it, but we'll come back to that. Get ourselves our heart container. Very nice. Not too bad. Feeling pretty good. The only thing that you can get, there's some rupees in like, there's a secret seashell, I think, that you can grab, but I'm not worried about that. This is the real prize. Time to tear up them keys. Link's showing everybody his big organ. Well, that was probably the most hyped up and anticlimactic way that I've ever finished a dungeon. I wasn't expecting to do it that well, but hey, it worked out. We got the organ of whatever evening calm. We got the mirror shield. We used our boomerang a lot. Pretty useful. But we're told that we need to use our ocarina. I actually lied about the use of the ocarina. I thought we were done with it, but we're not. I actually have a little bit more to go with it. So, guys, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for taking down the Eagle's Tower with me. And I'll see you next time. Bye.